Picture this, all right? I'm 23 years old, can't tell me nothing. <laughs> I'm on television, cooking at the highest level. I have millions of dollars invested in me, and I'm about to open my dream restaurant. And six weeks later, it closes. My name is Kwame Anwachi. I am a chef, an author, an actor, and an artist. So how I got to be a professional chef was my mom, you know, she had a catering company that she operated from the house. And we all had to help out, you know, to keep the lights on. And, you know, I would just watch her and mimic, you know, the way that she cooked. And the biggest thing I learned from her was how to season my food. I had to provide for myself and I did a lot of odd jobs. But the thing that I always went back to was cooking. It was a chore that turned into uh, a hobby that later turned into a passion and turned into a career. And, you know, I worked in restaurants all in New York City. Then I started my own catering company. Then went to culinary school. I started working in, you know, some of the best restaurants in the world. And then finally, I got to open my own restaurant. So those are two investors out of DC. You know, they never really operated restaurants before, which I was a little weary about, but hey, I never opened restaurants either. So we're in this together. And I essentially had carte blanche. You know, I can create the name, the concept. There was no budget. I was able to, you know, hire the staff that I wanted to hire. We called it the Shaw Bijou. My mother's name is Jewel. So Bijou, you know, is Jewel in French. And it was in the Shaw district. So we wanted to create like the Jewel of the Shaw. And we got to work. And it was a lot harder than I expected. It, it didn't come easy. I was in there tiling the walls and putting drains and installing stoves. It was a good feeling, you know. I learned so much about what it takes to build a restaurant from the ground up. We said we'd open up in about six to eight months, throw that number out. It was about a year and a half until the restaurant actually opened. You know, now we're close to, to opening the restaurant and we're trying to land on a price point for the food. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking conservatively, like we shouldn't charge too much. And this is kind of when I knew we were in trouble. The owners are like, you know, we need to charge $300 a person to make this work. I was like, I mean, I mean, I think I'm great. You know, I'm flattered, but I think that's gonna put like a target on my back, charging so much, you know, in a city that's not a major metropolitan city. I was like, why do we have to charge this amount of money? And they're like, well, we ran out of money. I was like, what do you mean we ran out of money? We haven't even opened yet. The restaurant was supposed to cost $200,000 to open. That's a number that doesn't even make sense in my head now, knowing what it takes to open a restaurant. But it ended up costing around $2 million to open. I mean, we had custom chairs from Copenhagen. We had hand-blown wall sconces instead of like regular light bulbs. You know, making something so personal as the Shaw Bijou, you know, was named after my mother. I wanted people to see themselves on a plate, see themselves represented. It felt like I was able to truly express myself. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna make this work. You know, if we're gonna charge this, we have to use these ingredients. We have to have this level of refinement every single night, day in and day out. So then we have opening day. This is where the magic is supposed to happen. Because the restaurant was an interactive experience. So you walked up these stairs as soon as you walked into the restaurant and you were greeted at a bar by a bartender. And you can ask for anything. And then you walked down this staircase into the kitchen and got your next course. And the second person to walk down was the biggest food critic in DC. One of the biggest food critics in the world. And uh, his face just was, was not very happy. <laughs> And to preface that, we had to announce the price point. And once we announced the price point, that $300, we were just hazed before we were even open. So people had their mind made up. Like, who's this kid coming, coming to DC, charging all this money? And that look was pretty much plastered on his face. He ate the meal pretty much reluctantly and you know, put out an article the next day. Ugh, did he slam it? <laughs> Yes, he slammed it. I remember probably smoking a pack of cigarettes afterwards in the alley behind the restaurant with tears in my eyes. We're two days old and he puts out an article saying he doesn't think it's worth the price point. I just felt defeated. I felt we weren't even given a chance. And I got a call from the owner if I can come in. It was, it was one of our days off and I walked in and he said, hey, you know, I'm sorry to tell you we're closing the restaurant. We don't have any more money. And I was like, okay. Thanks for the heads up, I appreciate it. Like, when are we closing? And he said, yesterday. My dreams kind of like fell through my hands like sand. I was plastered on pretty much all food publications. This is what not to do. 
This is why you take your time. This is why you don't just jump in and do something. This is why young chefs need to like put their heads down for longer. My partners went to the press and pretty much denied having any input in anything that happened in the restaurant. So all the blame went on me. And it was it was soul crushing. I can't say I didn't see it coming because we didn't have any money. You know, the money that we were making every day was going towards paying some bill that was from the past. So we had no working capital. I remember, you know, buying stuff from purveyors with my own credit card. Too many questions I should have asked um, and not being so caught up in the moment. What their goals were for this whole entire project. How much capital did they actually have? Did they have reserve for when we opened? What was their price point that we wanted to do from the beginning? You know, these are all the questions that I really should have asked before signing anything. I felt like I let my friends down. I felt like I let my city down. I felt like I let my people down. You know, as a, as a chef of color, it felt like I wouldn't have a chance to do this again. I feel like I had failed and I spiraled into a depression. Depression for me looked like a lot of Netflix in the dark with a hoodie on. Feeling sorry for myself. I did some soul searching and I vowed not to make the same mistakes again. So I pretty much have this knowledge from face planting uh, nationally. I was gonna ask about, you know, the opening budget. I was gonna ask about, you know, the os and &E and the ff and &E and making sure that like, we're spending the money appropriately. You know, and I think for me, I was also a very young leader. So, you know, my leadership could have been probably better. I wouldn't be anywhere without my face plants. When you fall on your face, you know, when, when, when you fail, quote unquote, you really have to assess, you have to take a look in the mirror. So, you know, the next time you face a challenge, you're, you're prepared for it. I looked at that and I got to work. I got my staff all together and we wrote down all the things we did wrong. And we wrote down all the things we did right. Six weeks later, we opened up another restaurant. 